Officer Steve Aponte, PIO, SJPD. First and foremost, I'd like to begin by expressing this department's sincere condolences to the family members affected by the two child deaths that were reported just yesterday after 9 a.m. in the thousand block of Fleetwood Drive. Uh, officers at that time did respond to a welfare check and jointly responded with San Jose Fire Department to investigate a call of several children in a pool. Uh, upon arrival, we discovered that two of the children were in severe medical distress. A third one was also located in the pool. All three were transported to local hospitals where unfortunately two were pronounced deceased. The third was uh, cleared with non-life-threatening injuries. Uh, nearly 24 hours after this incident, all of us are in shock, uh, feeling the trauma, not just for uh, the, the families involved, but also as a community. Uh, officers who responded to the scene and were there and saw the uh, incident and saw the children, obviously also have gone through certain trauma and there are the internal department mentors that we'll be taking to make sure that they are okay. As a whole, this is the type of call that's the worst that a parent can receive. Uh, as a department, we're going to investigate this, obviously, and we're not doing it alone. Our detectives in the Homicide Unit are taking the lead under our joint response network. We'll be working with the Santa Clara County Coroner's Office. We'll be working with the District Attorney's Office, as well as the Department of uh, Family and Child Services. Uh, together, once we finalize our decision through our investigation measures and collect evidence and finalize our reports, we will be providing that report and moving it forward to the District Attorney's Office. At that point in time, uh, the district attorney will speculate on the types of charges, if any, will be appropriate for this case. But again, it's still very early in the investigation. I don't have a lot of facts or figures in terms of where we are at uh, so far. But the most traumatic portion of it is, unfortunately, two juveniles under the age of five are dead at this time. And uh, as a department, we are very much interested in finding out why this occurred. And as I mentioned before, this investigation will be ongoing for several months as we process it. Uh, in cooperation with our partners at the District Attorney's Office as well as our partners over at the Department of Family and Children's Services. Questions? When you say it was responded to a call for a welfare check, what did, in fact, did that call come from the daycare or was it a neighbor? Um, do you know who the initial call was from? No, I don't have the initial reporting party that came in, uh, but I'm sure that's something that will be revealed through the course of the investigation. The information that I do have, it was a joint response regarding fire and PD at the same time, meaning that there's a possible medical, possible criminal uh, act occurring at the same time. And most welfare checks are that, specifically a person down, perhaps it may be medical distress, perhaps it may be criminal. We don't know until we all arrive and investigate it. Is the owner in custody? I don't have that information right now. Right now, all we're doing, all we're putting out right now is under five years of age, we're not identifying sex. <coughs> You know, I don't have the details of the scene. Obviously, I wasn't there, and I haven't spoken to investigators specifically on that. Again, it is early in the investigation, and those are the facts that will be revealed throughout the course of our investigation. Obviously, at one point, the children had access to the pool area. How and when that occurred, I'm still not certain. How many children were in the, in the house at the time of this? I don't have that information. All that I have is at the time of the call, there was three children that were uh, reported to be in the pool. Had the state care failed in the past? Any I don't have that information. That would be a question to dedicate towards the county. Um, their inspection services and certification process is different. Obviously, as a police department, we have facts and figures for calls for service, criminal incidents that occurred. None of that is on our radar in regards to certification, uh, licensing. That is a county question. Has your department ever been called to this house before? Not to my knowledge. Can you tell us how many adults were inside the hall when this happened? I don't have that information either. I apologize. Well, yeah, yeah, the possible charges definitely will be determined by the district attorney, but that's why we're working in partnership with them at this time. As we go through our investigation, we have the best investigators from the homicide unit looking into it. Although this isn't a homicide case, 
they're the best detectives that we have available and co-respond with the district attorney. So as the progression of the investigation continues, they can work together on making sure to solidify that portion of the case if necessary. At this time, it's way too early to jump into that. You know, I don't have those exact details, but I'm sure that people who are in the residence have been questioned. Neighbors in the area have been questioned. It's part of our protocol when we conduct investigations of this seriousness and magnitude. We're absolutely going to look for every single witness as possible and potential in that case. Ownership, uh, neighbors, other businesses that are nearby. Uh, and as a standard practice, we do a canvas in the area just to see if anybody heard anything or saw anything. And that plea continues now to this day. I want to ask anybody who's been out there in that area in the past 24 hours and heard or saw something and believe that it may be beneficial to our investigation, please come forward and speak to our detectives. You know, again, that's part of our investigation. It may set a timeline and precedence of showing when parents come and go, a drop off pickup. But that being said, it is something that we look into and we knock and talk in nearby residents and voluntarily ask folks to provide us with video footage. Even if the overall assistance of that footage may not be ultimately beneficial to solving the case, it's good to have that regardless, just to make sure that we're going through and going with a fine tooth comb. Were there cameras at the pool itself? I don't know that. Yes. Do you have that there was a pool cover on the pool? I don't know that either. You said there are three kids, right? Uh, what's the condition of the third kid who survived? Non-life-threatening injuries. Non-life-threatening yeah. You just asked the same question. He said, said, have they been released from the hospital? I don't have that information. The status of the third individual who survived. Yeah, it's still too early to say. We don't have an official timeline as to how the juveniles reached the pool area from the daycare or from the actual home itself. Obviously, there is a walkway that leads from the back door, sliding door into the back area. There is access point to, into the pool area. And somehow along the way, there are ways that those doors opened up. Um, whether or not that was the juveniles themselves, whether it was some other method, we're still looking into that. We want to investigate that fully. No, I don't know that. Is there any sense for how long the children were in the pool? If it's been a bit of time, or if this has just been a, uh, a very quick sort of thing, and then the was called in as, as it happened? Yeah, I don't have the timeline as to how long the children were in the pool at the time. Anecdotally, I can tell you as an officer who has previously responded to calls for service like this one before, um, they're very traumatic. Obviously, any parent who is also a police officer or EMT or firefighter responding to the scene is going to be severely, severely affected by the sight, just like any other normal person would, of a toddler or a child, young child in a pool. Uh, that being said, the officers, the firefighters, EMTs who responded to the scene were extremely professional. They did their duty, they did the best they could to bring these children back. And unfortunately, without uh, any other way or method to do that, unfortunately, those two did perish at the hospital. The last one, fortunately, uh, is uh, alive and without serious injury. Um, and again, as we go through, it's not just a process of reviewing the possibility of a criminal investigation, the questions of how this happened, and to really have the hard answers to why two children are dead. It's also a self-evaluation for ourselves as officers as we go in. How can we improve our response? How can we improve getting information over the phone from dispatch? How can we improve working with fire to perhaps be there faster, be there quicker? Uh, all those questions plague us, the what ifs, but ultimately, uh, a lot of times, even with the what ifs, we can't find a solution. Um, so the real answer to your question is, we don't know. We don't know. Any messages to the public when it, you mentioned self-evaluating about <coughs> parents, about the daycares? I know you think it is a specific, uh, early on in the investigation, what sure. happened with the Gator pool, but do you think about how others should avoid the next Yeah, certainly. I mean, like I said before, as a parent myself, I self-evaluated where I was gonna place my children when I had to be at work, when they had to be away from school and in daycare, and every parent has to make that hard decision independently. They have to use good judgment. They have to make sure that the location that they've selected is gonna be entrusted with their children to keep their children safe. And I think this investigation, if anything, uh, and the incident as a whole, 
will be an eye-opener to many families, not just here in San Jose, but nationwide, to really do their due diligence and investigate. And I'm not saying that there is any kind of negligence at this point in time, but obviously children are the most precious resource that we have. And just as we want them safe, driving to and from school, whether at school, whether at daycare, whether they're on the internet, on some kind of forum or whatnot, we want to make sure that we're doing the best we can to keep them safe. That's a parent's goal. That's a parent's dream to make sure that their children outlive them. And in this instance, uh, I, I can't see a way that they, they could have done anything different. What was the first day of response? I don't have the exact response times, but like I said before, it was a joint response between SJPD and fire. I don't know in terms of what was provided to that child, uh, and again, that would be subject to HIPAA in terms of medical stuff, so I can't discuss that. Do you know how long the kids were at the daycare facility after, how long the daycare I don't. I don't have the hours of operation nor how long they've been members of that said daycare, um, but yeah, again, that will come out through the process of investigations. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sorry guys, a lot of the details are still a little bit fuzzy in terms of what happened and what occurred. As I mentioned before, it's been all hands on deck since the incident. Um, uh, as we go through the investigation and work with our partners in the district attorney's office, uh, the Department of Family Services, we'll be providing more updates and information. Uh, if there is any kind of change or update through either our investigation or the court process, you'll be well aware of that. Uh, but as for now, I think I want to transition to Spanish.